Hey guys, this is Hall Modeling. Welcome to today's part three of my figure painting series on the Alpine Max Wunsch Waffen SS figure. And um, as I told you in the last video, I would do the uh, flesh parts off camera, which I have done. So both hands and the face are base painted. And today we will probably solely focus on the eyes. And maybe the hair, but I'm not sure about the hair yet. Um, as I told you guys on an earlier video, or on the last video, normally I do not pick the eyes out as much as others would do. I just do the basics. And sometimes, depending on the, well, the pose of the figure, I don't do it at all. Um, with this guy, I will do it because you can see him straight into his face and straight into his eyes, so it would be, uh, well, kind of stupid not to do it. So, without further ado, let me introduce you to Ravel's uh, Mat 5 White and Mat 302 uh, Black. But that's Silk Mat and not uh, Mat. So, um, we give it a shake, of course, once again. This is heavily thinned with UMP thinner. We use uh, a small brush. By the way, I have to give another another pop here for UMP. Um, I have not come across a, well, a range of acrylics that cannot be thinned with UMP thinner. So if you guys need thinner to uh, thin your acrylics, just give the guys at UMP Retail a look. I will post a link in the video description uh, so you can find them easily. Lee and Paul, the guys that own the company, are two gentlemen. They will uh, help you with uh, questions that you have regarding their products. You, you, you can not only get uh, thinner an air push cleanup from them, but you can get washes and you can get uh, sanding tools and sticks and PE places and all kinds of stuff. Those two are really, really generous. Um, their prices are top notch compared to other companies. When I compare their prices to the ones Ravel, for example, has for their thinner, which is much worse, those guys are, well, you can't even compare them. The Ravel guys are just much, much more expensive. All right, now we have a uh, very, very, uh, it's not, not highly precise, but we can just trim this afterwards. I just, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but let me try to focus on. I have now, use this. Maybe if I use this, we can, nah, it's the light. Probably, but I very, very, just randomly painted two white bobs where the eyes are. With resin figures, you can always distinguish when the eyes are very, very good. And um, now as I have the eyes in there, I'll let the white set for a second. And then I'll go back and take a blob of black, just a little tiny bit of black, and put it right in the middle of the eyes. Of course, eyes normally are not black, but... As the scale is so so small and um, the washes will or the wash will kind of dampen everything you cannot distinguish between blue or black I have blue in there I could do it in blue but the results would be exactly the same it will look exactly the same after I apply the wash so I'll just use the black just I don't know it's just preference and um, I'll, once again, you just you use your brush. This is really, really thin. I thinned this down so much, it's, it's just water with some black. You really thin it down. You take a little tiny bit on the tip of your brush. And then you, I've seen guys do uh, like lines in the eyes and then paint around them to reduce them. I don't do this normally. I just use the, the small tip of the brush. 
try to you go. See, that was already too much. I'm a bit shaky early today. So, I haven't eaten anything yet. That looks a bit strange, so I'll ruin that. So we will have to go back with the white. And, um, try to redo it. So, see, that those are the problems that I normally... Uh, have when painting eyes as they are so small and you can ruin them so easy and that easily you always have to well there's some time in your back pocket if you have to go over them again right my white needs a bit of thinner it's a bit thick um well um I hope you guys have enjoyed the series so far. I know that at sometimes the videos are rather short and uh, not much information is presented to you and uh, the information that is presented to you probably is, uh, well, what rather clear to you already. Um, just to make sure you guys understand what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm not trying to, like, uh, show off or anything. I'm just trying to give uh, beginners in figure painting a beginner's guide to how to paint figures as, surprise, surprise, I'm still a beginner in figure painting as well. And um, as I said in the other videos, I'm just doing that the way I do it. This is in no way, shape or form me saying the way I do it is the way everybody should do it. It's just the way I do it. All right, now the white is back thin again. Now we take the black out again. Once again, sharpen the tip of our brush, dampen it in black. Not too much black. You want to always keep your brush pointy at the end so that you don't mess it up. Then you try to center the eye. Now that's better. Oh, that's better too. All right, and then you try to send to the eye, and just put a black damp in there. <sighs> Jesus Christ! Why is that not working? One second, guys. Maybe it's the the camera being crazy again. direct lighting here. Oh yeah, now you can see them. You see those black dots in the eyes? Those are the pupils. Um, now, as I told you guys, I was rather um, careless with the white blob I, I created early. Now I'm going back and take the flash color back out that I painted the face with. And um, once again, you just dampen the brush, you don't want it to be like dripping and paint. And then you, you take the flesh paint and then you just trim the edges to where they actually belong, you know. Just to make sure he doesn't look like a Chinese. After that, you of course leave it to dry. As this is now a nine minute video, we will continue with the hair. This dude is, well, a Nazi German. Nazi Germans normally have blonde hair. Blonde hair is something rather hard to depict on models. Uh, I haven't uh, painted many models blonde so far. Well, um, the question is how to portray blonde perfectly. And, um, or not perfectly, but how to come close to portraying plant. This paint set does not offer 
a blondish color. So I will once again give my Ravel paint stash a look. And oh, Kelsa I can't find the paint. Where's the paint? Oh, up there. Okay. I used the paint to put a tank on while the tracks were drying. I use this Ravel Matte 16 sand color. You will now think, all right, that's just way too yellow. Once again, once we add the wash, it will tone it down and then it will look blonde. Of course, it's not like a uh, white blonde, but it's blonde. What's the rabbit doing? All right, I'm, I'm at my girlfriend's and her rabbits are running free around the living room. And her male rabbit is trying to scratch and like, trying to, to, to build a tunnel through the, the wooden flooring. Which is not so good for the wooden flooring, I guess. But my girlfriend is adamant that she has to run, have her rabbits run free. And I'm not going to argue with her, so I'm having the rabbit run free. So, once again, we need to thin this paint. Those revel paints, they dry rather fast on you. Even if you keep them closed, they are rather fast uh, drying paints. But once again, we give it a sturdy shake. And that's just much better. You will now think, Jesus Christ, this is just way, way, way too dark. Yes, it is. But don't worry. I will be lighting this up later on. I hope you can hear that rabbit doing his his shtick under the table. Once again, you do not want to dampen your brush. You just want to keep enough paint on it to paint the regions that you want to paint. But you do not want to have too much paint so that you cover the detail. Those figures, especially the resin figures, are really delicate when it comes to detail. You do not want to ruin that because you paid big bucks for them. And I might have a white arm here. I paid 15 euros for one figure, although it came with two heads, which is rather nice. And I will be able to use the second head on a plastic figure to maybe build a second one of him. Who, of course, then will not really resemble him, but will be at least close to him. And this is really one of the first times I'm painting a German blonde here which of course historically I should have done much more but normally I just use brownish hair as brownish hair is a rather standard color which is easy to depict and it doesn't come with much problems so here we go I don't know if you can see the difference between the flesh and the hair but this is it came up better than I thought it would come up. I actually like the look of that. And once again, once I add my really light dark wash and dry brush it with a, a, a lighter shade of the base color, I think that the depth of hair will be depicted rather well. Now, there are folks out there who, um, once again, I have to put on the gloves. Why did I take them off? There are folks out there who, well, tend to hyper-detail their faces. I normally don't, but as this is a tutorial, I want to show you guys how to paint eyelashes and eyebrows, or not eyelashes, I'm not going to paint eyelashes, but I, I'm going to paint eyebrows. Um, of course, they are normally the same color as your hair. I take just a small amount of paint. And you once again want your paintbrush to be as sharp and as pointy as possible. And then you just draw a thinnish, really thinnish line over the eye, right over it. This is something you need to be really careful with, guys, because you can just ruin everything. You won't see that, you won't be able to see that on the camera now. 
but uh, you hopefully will be able to see this once I'm uh, finished with this guy and I'll post po uh, pi uh, pictures of this guy. So, now we have uh, finished the second phase of painting. We have done the face, we have picked out the eyes and we've done the hair. The next part will probably will be dealing with the head he's wearing. That's the next part I'll do, the head. And I'll be getting out those colors for that and uh, giving them a go. Um, I will have that, that little fella set for at least 10 hours so that the paints really dry and harden. Maybe even longer. Because if you touch the figure, and I'm touching it, even though I'm touching it with gloves, you could damage the paint that you've put on. And as I don't want to put clear coats on it every stage of the way to ruin the, de uh, the detail, I'll just leave it at that and just have it dry. Alright guys, I hope this video has been informative for you. Um, I hope you're on the lookout for the next video, which will probably come in the next days. And thank you guys for watching. And may the force always be with you. And always remember Sevastopol. This is Hollywood Modeling.